Welcome back to our Holy Week devotionals on this very special day we call Good Friday. Good Friday. It's an odd name for this day that is literally the darkest day of the week in the life of Jesus during this Passion Week, Holy Week. It's a day that Jesus is crucified upon the cross and it appears that all hope is gone. It appears that this battle is lost. We're going to read in Matthew 27, beginning with verse 27. And it says that then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hell, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. They took the staff and they struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The ugliest day in history, but it precedes the greatest moment in history. There was a crucifixion. There was an ugly battle, the life of Jesus Christ, that he willingly laid down. His life was not taken from him. His blood was not taken from him. He gave it. It was not anyone's to take. It was God's to give, and he did. But during that crucifixion, he hung up on the cross. And there are two moments that really stand out to me that I just want to point out today. One is when he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that moment is kind of freeze framed in my mind because the way I picture it is the sky became dark. And in that moment that we know upon the cross, Jesus took our sins upon himself. It's It's as if sin begins to enter in like a massive beast, a massive force entering into his body and the agony of that sin gripping the sinless life of Jesus Christ is now ripping at Jesus' life. Something so foreign that Jesus has never known has now come upon him. Isaiah talks about him being so... uh, racked with pain and beaten beyond description. I think part of that is the sin that has come upon his body. It's almost like a cancer that comes upon his body and begins to destroy the physical part of his life. He takes my sin and he takes your sin upon himself and nails it to that cross because it's a price that we couldn't pay. Our our blood's not good enough. Our life is not sinless. So we couldn't pay that, but Jesus did it for us. And I think of that pain entering him, that sin entering him, that darkness entering him that he had never known before, but he did that for you and for me. That moment really sticks out in my mind. And I'm humbled each time I think of that because I can't imagine the agony that Jesus experienced when that happened. But there's another moment that sticks out to my mind or sticks out in my mind on the cross. And that's when the thief, there's two thieves, one that mocked Jesus and said, if you're really the son of God, get us down from here. But there was another thief that had a different attitude. And this thief chose to reach out to Jesus and say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus had the most compassionate response and said said to him, said, today you'll be with me in paradise. That scene, that moment, it gives us perhaps the greatest example of faith that we see in the pages of scripture because this thief has complete confidence in the person of Jesus who is at his worst moment. He is hanging on a cross It appears that he is defeated and he's dying. 
And the thief puts his faith in this man. How can someone put their faith in someone who appears to be defeated and beaten? He can unless he has a revelation that this is the Son of God. And something that thief saw convinced him that this truly was the Son of God. You remember there's a Roman soldier that came to that same realization after the crucifixion. He looked up and said, truly, this was the Son of God. That thief had that revelation. And in that moment, he put his faith in Jesus at Jesus' worst moment. And that kind of calls all of our faith into question. Because if he can put his faith in Jesus at what appears to be Jesus' worst moment, what's keeping us from putting our faith in Jesus at his best moment when he's sitting at the right hand of the Father? I mean, the fact is, I believe that we can put our faith in him today. We can put our faith in him every day. The thief put his faith in a dying Jesus. We have our faith in a risen Jesus, in a risen Savior. So my challenge to you today is to just take this moment, just as the thief did, and simply, courageously, Put his faith in Jesus. I want you to put your faith in Christ today because there's a promise that Jesus gave the thief and that promise is still good for us today. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. One day, we'll all be with him in paradise. And that is why Friday is good. Oh, it was an ugly, brutal day. But it's a good day because you know what happens? That's the day that Jesus reverses the curse. And rather than us being sent to hell, Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross and offers us a promise to be with him forever, making our impossibilities possible. So what do you have to be thankful for this Good Friday? What do you have to give thanks for? Why not list a few things today? Just write a few things down, two or three things down that God has done for you and remind yourself of why this is still Good Friday. Grace, what have you done? Murder for me on their cross. In absence of wrong My sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace You died in my place, oh my soul Will live all to be like you. I give all I have just to know you, Jesus. There's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Death, where is your?
because of you, Jesus is whole. Because of your love and my soul will end. And is all because of you, Jesus is all. The hope in my heart